Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. In this video I'll show you how to look after your daffodil plants after they've finished flowering. So generally your daffodil plants will be outside. Uh, I've just brought these inside for demonstration purposes. Um, daffodils do best outside as it's too warm in the house and they go over too quickly. So once your daffodils stop flowering there's a few things you should do that will really help them to flower more next year. So first of all You'll notice this here is a flower which has just started to die and what you want to do is you want to cut the, the flower head off and I'll explain why. But first of all, if you get the flower, you'll notice just behind the yellow petals here there's quite a bulbous lump and what you want to do is cut just below that. You'll see there's a slight papery bit on the bottom there and you just want to cut below that. So I'll just give you guys a close up to give you more information on it. So you can see it there. You cut it just below the papery section, just here, which is behind this fat piece at the end. Now the reason you do this is because what happens when the flower finishes is it starts swelling up and putting energy into the, into the seeds. And what will happen if, if you just leave that, the, the plant will put a lot of energy into the seeds and less energy into the, into the bulb. So le next year's flowers will be a little bit less. If you cut this off, it doesn't put energy into its seeds, it puts more into the bulbs and therefore you'll get more flowers. For example, if I cut this in half, I should be able to show you some small seeds that are forming. So the white bits inside here are the new seeds and you can see them there. Now if you've got a large lawn and you've got it in a natural setting like a woodland, or if you've got a lot of bare soil, if you want you could leave these and if there's enough daffodils and they're happy, they will actually self-seed themselves. But in most gardens, the best thing to do is cut the seed heads off and let the plant then build up its bulbs and divide via its bulbs instead of the flowers because the seeds take a long time to germinate, a long time to build up the size to become a, a flower for next year and also if it's not in the right environment they won't actually succeed. So the native environment for the daffodil is a woodland, so it's a lot of bare, bare earth in spring and there's a lot of sunshine as well. And then later on in the year there's a lot of shade and so the daffodil dies back. So the reason you want to leave this, the, the stalk here that the flower used to be on is because the energy from the stalk will slowly go back into the bulb, it will take any nutrients back, but also you can see it's green and anything that's green on a plant means it has chlorophyll in it and can produce energy through photosynthesis. So this is acting a little bit like a leaf. So if you cut this flower stalk right off, you'll be cutting off one of the sections of the plant which gives it more energy. So leaving that means that it can get more energy from the sun and it will build a bigger bulb and better flowers for next year. And the final thing with daffodils that a lot of people do, is, which is a mistake, is when, when the flowers are finished, there's a lot of leaves and people don't like the look of the leaves, they think they're untidy. So they tie them up like this in a bunch and they put an elastic band around it or a bit of string. Now the reason you don't want to do this is because you see all these leaves here, instead of being open and having lots of light on them, they're now crowding each other out and there's, there's a lot less light getting to the leaves and a lot less air. And when you've got less air and less light to the leaf, they can't photosynthesize properly and therefore can't produce enough energy for next year's bulb. So doing that you'll severely reduce the amount of energy that the plant can, can grow. And a final thing to say about daffodils is if you've got them in a bed or in a lawn and you're wondering when to cut the leaves back, the best thing to do is leave it for as long as possible. Because the longer the leaves are up and growing, that's the more sunshine the plant is getting and therefore the more energy it's putting back into the, into the bowl. So if they're on your lawn, you should try not to cut the grass where they, they are, just kind of cut around the plants if it's possible. Leave the grass, or leave that section with the daffodils for as long as possible. And about June time, when the, the leaves start to go yellow, start dying back naturally, that's when you can cut the grass. But otherwise, don't cut the leaves back. And the same with the herbaceous border. If you can, leave the leaves uh, for as long as possible and just when they're going, going to die back and they start going yellow in, in June, that's when you should cut them back. And if you're thinking about feeding them, the best thing to feed them is a high potassium feed, something like tomorite. The reason for that is if you give them a lot of nitrogen, they'll just produce lots of leaves and they won't produce as many flowers. But if you give them a lot of uh, tomorite, it has, low, it has low nitrogen 
and it has high potassium and potassium encourages flowers. It also has quite a lot of phosphorus which is good for developing the plant's roots and also for fattening up the bulbs. So for that reason give it a flower feed and you should be rewarded every year with more and more daffodil flowers. So that's, that's how I'd recommend you look after daffodils and keep them in the sunny spot in the garden so they can get as much sunlight and as much energy built up so they give you a great display next spring. Thanks for watching.